Good evening, gardeners. It's Thursday, February 4th, and you don't see me in a hat, gloves, and coat very often here on the southeastern coast of North Carolina, but that is just how cold this winter has been. I've been here for four winters, and we have never had consistently cold temperatures like this before. In fact, this is the first winter that my fig trees do not have any sap flow in them. Normally, it doesn't get cold enough here to stop the sap flow uh, up from the top parts of the fig trees, but it's been so consistently cold, all of the sap is now concentrated down in the roots, and I'm not getting any bleeding at all if I cut my fig trees. So I decided to take this opportunity to make a video and show you all how to take cuttings from your fig trees, because for many of us right now, we're at peak winter and we're in peak cold, and now is the ideal time to prune your fig trees because the sap flow is as low as it's going to get. So in pruning your fig trees, you are going to want two separate tools. You are going to want a set of pruning shears, and you are going to want some kind of small, fine saw for larger pieces of wood. And for this, I like using a Japanese pool saw because they are really good at pruning smaller branches. And if you're curious where to get any of these items, I have them linked in my Amazon storefront for convenience. I also have a diamond edged pruning sharpener, which I have linked as well, because you want to make sure that you start off with a very sharp set of pruners before you begin the pruning process. So now that we have the tools that we need, we need to make sure that we sanitize these. So either wash them first under hot soapy water, use rubbing alcohol, or soak them in hydrogen peroxide to make sure that they're clean. Now let's discuss the pruning process itself. When you prune your fig trees, you want to make sure that you make your cuts in between the nodes of the tree. And these two locations right here are called nodes. These are the ends of growth points on the fig trees where branching can occur. So this is a node where there's almost like a defined fissure line, and then uh, you get a growth point, and then you go up to another node where there is a defined fissure line. And at each of these nodes, you'll see up at the top, there is a bud, and then right below it, there is another uh, piece, uh, which almost kind of looks like a bud as well. And at each of these points here, these two points, one is a leaf node and one is a fruit node. So both a fig and a new branch can form at a node point. And then you can see where this fissure line is right here. There's a couple of bumps. At those bumps is where roots can come out. So your nodes are your fruiting points, your branching points, and your rooting points. So you need to have those nodes buried in order for the cuttings to root. Now that I describe what a node is, the reason why you can't cut through a node is they have to be completely intact because those are what you're going to bury under the soil line in order to root your cuttings. Now let's discuss the ideal size of the cuttings. I personally believe that the ideal size of fig cuttings is somewhere between 6 to 10 inches long. And it is important that when you take cuttings that each cutting has at least three nodes on them. And the reason why you want three nodes is you want at least two nodes to be buried underneath the soil line and you want at least one node to stick above the soil line. Your fig cuttings root at the nodes, so if you only bury one node, that is only one location where your cutting can potentially root. If you bury two nodes, you will get double the chances of rooting success. And of course, if you have even tighter node spacing and you bury three or four nodes, then you'll have three or four chances for success. So generally, burying more nodes gives you a better chance of success at rooting your fig cuttings. However, the general rule of thumb is you don't want to bury your cutting more than about 50% or so, because if you bury them too deeply, there seems to be an increased chance of rot. You also want to make sure that there is at least one node sticking above the soil line because you need at least one location for your fig cutting to bloom and form new wood. If you don't have any nodes sticking above the soil line, you are going to have to hope that your fig cutting will root and then send out new suckers from the base. And that can take months and months and it will probably put your fig tree an entire season behind. 
Believe it or not, if you root fig cuttings over the winter, there is a very good chance that you can actually get fruit by late summer or early fall. So you want to give your cutting the best chance to take off. So you want at least one node above the soil line to leaf out. If you can have two nodes buried underneath the soil and you can have two nodes sticking above the soil line, that's even better. In my personal opinion, the ideal cutting length is about eight inches and contains about four nodes but it can vary given the condition of the cutting. We want to use the clippers anytime that we have smaller branches uh, because they will cut through them very effectively. However, you want to use the saw, the hand saw, when you have any branches with a diameter larger than one half of an inch because the pruning shears will crush them. You won't get a clean cut, whereas a very fine hand saw or pruning saw will not damage the wood. And just to make my point, I want to show you what will happen if I cut a very thick piece of wood with my, with my regular shears. What you will likely see happening is that it will begin to crush the wood. And that is precisely what happened right here. You can see right here, the fig cutting actually got crushed. So that wood right there is actually damaged. And that is exactly why you don't want to prune very large diameter pieces of wood with your shears you want to use a pool saw because you'll get a much cleaner cut. So now I'm going to use this pool saw on the exact same piece of wood and I know what you're thinking I know I have a hole in my glove but it just doesn't get that cold here I don't really own gloves this is all I have and I'm not used to having to wear them. And here you can see the difference in the two cuttings that I took. The one on the left I wound up crushing with the shears, whereas the one on the right I made a nice clean cut with the pull saw. And you can see how it's kind of crushed. The pith of the wood is not looking very good on the left, but here it's nice and clean. So it's important that you make the cleanest cuts possible and you don't crush your cuttings because a crushed cutting is less likely to be successful when rooting. Now an important concept when pruning your fig trees is to remember not to sacrifice your fig tree just to get cuttings. At all times, the overall shape and form of the fig tree has to be priority over the cuttings themselves. So what we want to do first is we want to prune the fig tree down to the form that we want it to be. Then we want to salvage the wood that is left over into good quality cuttings to propagate more trees or to give them to friends and family or sell them or whatever you want to do with them. So when looking at this fig tree, generally my rule of thumb is for a fig tree in containers, I like to single stem them, but uh, you can also grow them in two or three different stems. I think any more than three stems is going to be too large for a container. Um, two fruiting branches is probably the maximum that you really want to have. So most of these auxiliary branches, like down here, this one looks like it can be removed same thing down here. This can be removed. This can be removed. And I think we want to keep this as a strong fruiting branch. And this is a strong fruiting branch because they have the largest calipers and it's the best quality lignified hardwood. And we can also leave these little branches right here that are coming off uh, the, the top of the tree itself because they, um, they may not even survive the winter because it's been so cold. They may be subject to dieback. And to give you a better view from this angle, this right here will be a main fruiting branch and this right here will be a main fruiting branch because they're so thick. We can remove this auxiliary branch, this auxiliary branch, and this auxiliary branch. Now because these branches are so thick, we want to use our pull saw in order to cut them. We do not want to use the pruners because they will damage them. And the pull saw has a coarse section and a fine section. We want to use the fine section to make our cuts on our fig tree. So I'm going to start off with this auxiliary branch right here and remove that. Then we'll go to this branch next. And then we'll go to this branch and remove that. And here you can see just how clean the cuts are. That cut is nice and clean and smooth. So is that cut. And so is that cut right there. So cut quality is everything when it comes to pruning your trees. Now that we've removed the auxiliary branches on our fig tree, we want to prune back the main stems. And what is important to note that when it comes to pruning any kind of fruit tree, 
all trees grow from a principle called apical dominance. And what apical dominance is, is that trees always grow upward towards the sun. The growth hormones that settle down in the root mass of the fig trees, or any kind of fruit tree, uh, during the non-growing season, if it's a tree that grows into dormancy, when the trees wake up, that growth hormone will move themselves to the top most points of the tree. So trees are always trying to grow up to reach the solar energy of the sun because photosynthesis is what drives energy production in trees. They want to get as close to the sun as possible. So that is why trees, once they make their lower branches and they keep growing up and up and up, they never make any lower branches down there again. Their growth is done down there. They only grow at the top points of the branches. So if your tree is very off balance and you have a tree where one branch is all the way up here and one branch where is all the way down here, this branch isn't really down here, isn't really going to grow anymore because all of the growth hormone is trying to get to the top of the tree to reach the sun. So the tree is going to be neglected down here. That's why this growth here is so spindly. The, growths, the growth up here, these tips were sucking up all the growth hormone, so these little branches down here got forgotten. If I wanted this to be the main leader of the tree, I would have to remove this and this all the way down here, so this is the highest point of the tree. If I did that, the tree would grow up from this point because it is now the king of the castle. It's now in the highest spire of the castle. So when you prune your fig trees, you always have to make sure that you prune your leaders to the same length. You can't cut one up here and then one down here. If you do that, this one's barely going to grow. The highest point of the tree is always going to get the growth hormone. So when I cut these two leaders right here, I want to cut them at the exact same depth uh, relative to off the ground. So when I pull a tape measure up, I want this if this is 18 inches off the ground, I want this cut to be 18 inches off the ground. So make sure they're the same height. Once you cut back your trees, which we call heading the trees, those new established growth points are where the tree is going to try and leaf out because that is where all of the growth hormone is going to concentrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this tree uh, I kind of like it right, this is probably a really good, this is about knee height. Knee height is good for uh, growing fig trees in containers, in my opinion. So I'm going to make my pruning cut here, and I'm going to make the pruning cut on an angle, not parallel with the ground, because I don't want water to pool uh, on a parallel cut, because you could get rot. Always make it on an angle so any moisture drips off. And now that I've made my cut right here, um, I'm going to roughly measure, so this is equidistant in terms of from the ground. My next cut is going to be right about here. So now I have a tree that has been cut back and both growth points are at the exact same height off the ground. So they should get an equal amount of growth hormone and they should branch out uh, at the nodes right underneath the cuts and I'll get really nice branching right here the following season. And here is a zoom in view of the fig tree. It's a little hard to tell but these two cuts are both about at the exact same height off the ground within the inch or so. So this is going to be the new fruit tree form and it is going to blossom out at all of these locations and make a really nice third year fig tree. So now that we've pruned back our fig tree, we're left with all of this leftover wood. And we can turn these into cuttings. Now, generally, you want to only make cuttings out of lignified hardwood. You don't want there to be any green on these cuttings. And anything that is really thin, like this, uh, this, this wood is so thin, it's less than a pencil in diameter thin. It's really only good for grafting. So unless you want to graft this, this little piece onto something, uh, it probably won't be that good at starting cuttings. So I'm going to take all of the thin wood off and kind of move that over into a pile because it's not worth a whole lot to me. This really thin wood also likely would not survive shipping. And pruning thin wood like this is when your sharpened shears really come in handy. 
And now this is some of the better quality, more lignified hardwood that we can actually use for rooting figs. So I'm going to cut this one right here. That's a good one. Here's another good one. And most of the wood right here is suitable for cuttings. Uh, it's fairly thick, it's fully lignified. There is no dieback shown from cold damage. So these would be uh, really good ideal candidates to try and root and clone into new fig trees. And that right there is how you prune a fig tree for cuttings. Everybody, I sure hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe for future updates and more videos like these. If you're curious about any of the products that I used in this video or any of the products that I use in my garden in general, everything that I use is linked in my Amazon storefront in the video description. Thank you all again so much for watching, and we hope to see all of you again on the next video.